Hi, we're going to talk about the eight main stages of data analysis in this video. Well, first of all, what is meant by data analysis? Well, in a nutshell, this is trying to discover useful information from what is usually a large amount of data. So, as we've looked at in many videos, organizations collect lots and lots of data. That's not useful unless you do some analysis and you try and extract what is actually beneficial from it. So you collecting all of your sales data for the last five years is not useful on its own. It's only useful when you do some analysis to look for patterns and trends and how customers reacted to particular events and so on and so on. So that's what analysis is, looking at the data in more detail. So before you even start this process, the first step in this stage is to identify what the need is, which is really, what do you want to find out? So before you do anything, you've got to figure out what your goals are. And in particular, figuring out what data is needed to allow this analysis. If you were, say, looking for a prediction of how many signups you're going to get on your website in the next year, well, you probably need to collect data about last year's signups so you can make that prediction. So this is figuring out what you need to do. The next step is to define the scope of this analysis. So scope is all about how far you're going to go. So a wide scope, means you're doing lots of analysis, quite a limited scope is not loads of analysis. And this actual stage is all about setting out more detail of this process. So you've decided roughly what you want to achieve and what data you need to use, then you're setting out specific details. So these are things like deciding the timescales, when you're going to stop collecting data, when you're going to stop analysing the data. Things like constraints, a constraint is some limitation. So a big constraint is often budget. So you might only have so much money to spend. Another constraint might be how many employees you can spend, how many employees you can use as part of this analysis. And also you might set up the exact content, what exact data is needed and where might it come from. So I think a key question at this point is figuring out what is realistic and what do you actually need. The third big stage of data analysis is identifying potential sources. So this is really saying, where could the data come from? So do you need to run a big survey? Do you need to organize some focus groups where you can speak to some customers or some employees? The exact source will vary based on the analysis being done, but you've got to figure out where the data is actually going to come from. Then you need to actually source and select this information. So actually getting the information. And this should be ideally the best information available so as part of this process, really there should be some evaluation of the reliability and the accuracy of this data. If you've written a survey which is really opinionated and not very well written, if your customers have not filled it out properly, that might not be particularly accurate and so it might not be that useful. Likewise, if you interviewed, say, all of your employees about a new product, well, are they reliable? Might they just be pretending they like the product because you're paying them? It might not be fully reliable. So you've got to figure out what data is useful at this point, And if it's not useful, potentially go back again and collect it again. This is all about sorting the facts from the kind of fake, not useful data. Step five is the final kind of step before you start doing the analysis. This is selecting the most appropriate tools to do this analysis. So what software are you going to use to be able to do this analysis. And I won't talk more about this because we'll cover that in a separate video coming up next. Last, last few steps then. So actually we're now starting to actually do the analysis. All of the previous steps were just getting set up, ready for this analysis. So step six is processing and actually analyzing this data. So actually using the chosen tools that you selected in step five. So if you chose to use a spreadsheet, you would put your data in a spreadsheet and maybe generate a graph from this. And so this graph is you doing analysis, right? The table on its own might not be that useful, but you make it into a graph is actually doing analysis because now we can see things like patterns much more easily. And if you've got particularly useful results, like you've made something like a graph, you need to then record and store this information. Just bear in mind, there's a slight difference between data and information. You know, the data is our original version once we've analysed it, it becomes information, it becomes useful to us. And so therefore, what we really want to do is retain it for later on. So store it so we can use it down the line. 
Now this might be dumping all of these charts into a report, it might be saving it in a particular file just so you've got access to it later on. And the final step, which may or may not happen depending on your organization, is sharing these results. So often you'll be doing the analysis for somebody, for your manager, for maybe the board of your company. So you might share any conclusions, any results with stakeholders, a stakeholder being anyone who's interested in this analysis. So often it'll be putting it into a PowerPoint and presenting to maybe your team, maybe to your managers. So these are eight steps which are usually followed in order or pretty much in order to be able to do data analysis.